These next two instructions, the double divide and scale, are a little more obscure, especially the double divide. The double divide is more apt to be handy with the smaller processors that don't handle large math. The scale instruction basically allows you to modify a value in, its, in the limits of its range to match a completely different range of limits. You'll see in the labs. This lab was all about introducing 32-bit math. All registers in a Micrologix are 16-bit, signed integer, meaning that the last bit, bit 15, is the signed bit. If it's 0, then you have a positive value. If it's 1, then you have a negative value. So really, you only have 15 bits as far as the actual size of the integer goes. That being said, the range of values is from a minus or negative 32,768 through 0 up to a positive value of 32,767. However, with 32-bit math, the, a special function in the processor allows you, if you set the right control bits, to do a calculation and have the results stored in S2 colon 13. S2 colon 13 and S2 colon 14 together, if you have selected math overflow, in other words, you have set S2 slash 14 to 1, then you can put the result in S colon 13 and by default it goes into S colon 13 and 14 or you could say the overflow goes into S2 colon 14. However, if you have an overflow, that overflow will fault the processor unless you keep S2 colon 5 slash 0 set to 0. That's why the last instruction in our logic here is an unconditional unlatch of S5 slash 0. Now occasionally I say S colon or S2 colon because there is only one file 2 in the data file structure for slicks and micrologics they drop the 2 and just put S because there is only one status file. Okay so in our lab here uh, the first rung unconditionally selects math overflow meaning that it selects to put the overflow into S214. The second rung with a one shot multiplies N70 times N71 and puts the result in S2 colon 13 and since you have math overflow selected any overflow will also go up into S2 colon 14. The second instruction or the second rung with a switch and a one shot rising does a double divide. Now it's a very tricky looking instruction because when you first look at that you might think that you're dividing the source by 3 and 7 1 is divided by 3 and the result put in and 7 2 but that's not true. A double divide instruction only functions with S2 13 and 14 the 32-bit registers. So when the rung is true, a double divide will divide whatever is in both S13 and 14 together as one value. It will divide it by the source of this instruction, which is N71, and it puts the results in N72. The uh, fourth rung, or rung 3, is just simply to allow you to clear S2 colon 13 and 14 in the case that you mess something up or you just want to clear it and start over. So with N70 equal to 32,000 we had you toggle uh, input 0 on and then off once. What value appeared beneath S colon 13 in the multiply instruction? Not in the S2 data file that's open and locked on top but looking up in the instruction what appeared there? 30,464. Well 3 times 32,000 is not 30,464. What value appears under the math tab in the math register? 96,000. That's the correct answer. But that is the only place that you can actually go look at the result 
as a whole integer would be where it says math register 32 bit S14 and S13 displays 9600. You cannot address that value and do other mathematical operations with it. However, you can address S colon 13 with other instructions as long as you have the math overflow selected and do mathematical functions. And that's what we're going to do next. Uh, but first we had to change the radix to binary and scroll down to S13 and S14. And then using S13 as the least significant word, convert S13 and S14 to decimal. Combining those two, S13, 30,464, and the first bit of S14, that multiple of two, would be 65,536. You add those two together, you get 96,000. So if you treat S13 to 14 as a 32-bit binary value, you get a decimal conversion of 96,000, which is what's displayed in your math register. Okay, as I already said, the multiple of 2 for the 17th bit, if you actually had a 32-bit word, that multiple of 2 would be 65,536. And you added the integer value of the least significant word, 30,464, to the value of the most significant word, 65,536. And what would their sum be? We've already dealt with that, 96,000. Does it match the value displayed when the radix is structured? No. Now I said yes here because once I started thinking about the question, you could go either way with it. Because when you are looking at the structured form, it says 30,464 and then it has another value for S14. But when you look right below it, where it's displaying the register, it says 96,000. So we'll leave it at yes. But I realize that uh, this question was not structured very well. So a yes or no would work for you, depending on why you thought it was no and why you thought it was yes. Now at this point in the lab, you should still have 9,600, 96,000, excuse me, in the math register because the next thing we're going to do is execute the double divide. And remember the double divide is going to divide the source into S1314, put the results in S72. So we'll go ahead and execute uh, by flipping the input 1 on then off. What value do you have as a result of a double divide in register N72? Remember if you look at it correctly, the source is 3, and what's left in S1314 is 96,000. So what is 96,000 divided by 3? You should have had 32,000 appear in N72. Now I put a note here that you don't have to clear the math register if your next execution writes to the register because it, it will overwrite the former uh, result in the destination. But a subsequent double divide would divide what is currently in, in S1314 by 3. So it's always a good idea to clear it after each, each execution. In most cases, if you're going to do 32-bit math, you'll put the 32-bit math logic in a separate subroutine, in a separate program file, or I should say in a sep yes, separate subroutine, and you will JSR to that subroutine anytime you want to execute 32-bit math, and as you come out of the subroutine, you will do housekeeping behind you. In other words, you'll clear out the registers, clear any bits that are necessary. Uh, this wasn't meant to be an in-depth exploration of 32-bit math. Simply an introduction. Always keep in mind that if you select math overflow by setting S2 colon 2 slash 14 to 1, then if you do a math function that has a result that goes higher than 32,767, the overflow will go into S14. However, that's still an overflow. All you did was selected that you want the overflow to go into S14. 
but you still have an overflow condition that will fault the processor unless you always include an unlatch S colon 5 slash 0. In other words, unlatch the overflow trap before the rungs of logics are complete. In other words, if you put it as the last rung in your program file, it will always clear that bit so you don't fault the processor. So really, it's all about a manipulation of a few bits and keeping track of what's in S13 and 14. Because remember, you cannot display this 32-bit version of S13 and 14. Thank you. The scale instruction, very interesting instruction, very simple once you learn what all of the uh, parameters are in the instruction. You have a source, a rate, an offset, and a destination. I included a, a little uh, equation that says the source times the rate, which is N71 divided by 10,000 plus the offset equals the destination. So in the lab, in order to demonstrate the effect of rate on the destination, leaving the offset out right now, leaving the offset set to zero, I had you for values of N70 equaling zero through 32,767. So down in step two, I have you enter different values of N71, in other words, different rates. And remember that the rate is going to be whatever you put in N71 divided by 10,000. So if you start out with 1, then 1 ten thousandths times 32,767 is going to be 3. If you increase N71 to 10, now you're dividing 10 by 10,000, which is 1,000. So what is 1 thousandths of 32,767? roughly 33. The reason that you're not getting uh, 32767 in any form is because this processor does not support floating point. And even if it did, if we'd selected integers in seven files, it still would round it off. And if you round off 30, or we'll say 3.2, it rounds down to 3. 32.7 rounds down, or 32.7 rounds up to 33. And 327.6 is going to round up as well. So if you put N100 for N71, see it rounds up 327.6 rounds up to 328. So put in 1,000, 1,000 over 10,000 for rate is 10. So basically uh, you're dividing 32,767 by 10 and then rounding it off. Now, if we go to 10,000, you're back to unity, so, because 10,000 over 10,000 is 1. 1 times the source with no offset. The destination is going to be equal to the source. Now, in case you don't understand what the scale instruction is for, it is to allow you to bring in a range of values from such as an analog card, which we do not have analog in the Micrologix 10-point processor. If you're using the 1100, with the free software. The 1100 may have analog that you could actually substitute floating point addresses for source, offset, and destination and do something completely different. The idea is to bring in a range of values from an analog card, well let's say 0 through 32,767, but you want to display 0 through 10 volts. So when you have 0 in, you want 0 volts when you have 32,000 767, you want 10. That's your range. Okay, so you're scaling here. Now, I pick multiples of 10, so to speak, 1, 10, 100,000, and 10,000. Let's just grab other values. What happens when you make N71 equal to 7? You get, for a value of N70, starting at 0, going up through 32,767, you're going to go 0 through 23. We double that, 0 through 46. If we go by 10, 460. Now, remember, it rounds off, so it's not exactly 460. If we go by another 10, 
4,587. If we go to 9,800, 32,112. So see, you can use a scale instruction to create any range that you like. In the next step here, I turn you loose to put in values of N71 to get the range that you would like. So you see in the left hand column 4 N70 equals 0 through 32,767. 32, what value would you have in N71 if you wanted a result of 0 through 20,000? So you would go do some experimenting. You know, I don't care how you do it. You can do it with straight mathematics and pre-calculate it and throw in the value and test it. Or you can just start throwing in values to see what you get in your destination with a source value of 32,767. So you should have ended up with something close to 6,104 as a value for N71, meaning 6,104 divided by 10,000 times 32,767 gives you 20,000. Basically, six tenths of 32,000 is 20,000. Then I had you do the same thing if for 0 through 15,000. You, your values may have been off by one integer, but they shouldn't be off by any more than that. For 0 through 7,500, and notice that it's divided in two. 7,500 is half of 15,000. So 2,289 is roughly half of 4,578. So the next one, N73, 1526, 1,526, is roughly one-third of 4,578, which was your um, value for N71 when you wanted 0 through 15,000. So I think you see the pattern here. So if N71 being 6,104, the very first one, 6,104, gave you 0 through 20,000, then what would you do if you wanted a range of 0 through 1,000, which is 1 20th of the first example? Well, divide 6,104 by 20, and you get roughly 305. Not exact, but very close. The smaller the range gets, the harder it is to really nail it 0 to a whole or a, a power of 10, or a even number, we'll say. And then the last one, 0 through 750, you get 229. Now, obviously, if you want 0 through 10 volts, uh, that's not going to happen if you have a processor that doesn't support analog. But I think you get the idea of how to use a scale instruction to mathematically manipulate that raw binary value that comes in in a 16-bit sign integer and have it change in a scale or a range zero to something else. In the previous steps, uh, you exercise the ability to alter the value of rate by altering what's stored in N7 colon 1 to get a different maximum from 32,767, which is the highest positive signed integer that you can have in a register. Here we're adding another uh, complication, if you will, or another factor, and that is the offset. In the previous steps, we use zero. Here, I want you to figure out what value for rate, N71, and what value for offset, N72, to convert 0 to 32,767 to a different range of 20 to 20,000. That means with 0 in, you want 20 out. With 32,767 in, you want 20,000 out. You would have should have had something close to 6,098 for your rate, and of course an offset of 20 because that's what you're doing. You're offsetting the 0 value. For 500 to 5,000, you need a rate of 1,374 and, of course, an offset of 500. Consequently, if you're going to have a range of 125 to 250, you need a rate of 38, but you need an offset of 125. 